It's so easy to get caught up in feeling like you have to buy all of the products all of the time to achieve that wonderful mixed media texture that you see in all of those beautiful projects online. What if I told you, you don't need 20 different pastes or 10 different gels, you just need one product. Yes, just one. And that product is gesso. In today's video, I will show you how you could take a basic product like gesso and stretch it beyond its intended use. And in this case, because it's gesso, the intended use is to prime your surface. Break out that gesso and let's get started. Gesso is a staple for any mixed media project, so you can prime your surface. However, gesso is so much more than just a primer. I'm going to be using heavy body gesso today as it seems to work best for many of the techniques I'm going to be showing you. If you have a more fluid gesso, you may need to thicken it up for some of these techniques. So you can see the texture and the techniques better. I mixed black gesso and white gesso together to create a gray color as you could see here. The first way to add texture to your project is so simple and you may not even realize that the bristles from the paintbrush give you amazing texture. It's subtle, but it's there. I like to think of the paintbrush strokes as a base texture or a starting off point. You can also use a scraper tool or an old gift card to scrape on the gesso. You can get a smooth look, or if you are less heavy handed, you can create waves and unique te texture by just moving the scraper tool back and forth. With the scraper tool, you can add it as thick or thin as you want. It's totally up to you. One of my favorite ways to use gesso to add texture to my projects is using my seasoned brayer. And what I mean by that is you could see that I don't clean my brayer at all, so the paint just builds up and it can result in some effortless texture as you could see here. With these texture ideas, I am just scratching the surface. This video is not meant to give you 5,000 different ways to create texture, but to get you sitting at your craft desk, looking at your products that you already have and experimenting with them. Chances are you already have a palette knife. If you're not, you can use a plastic butter knife for this technique. It isn't anything fancy. None of these techniques are, but that's okay. I love getting back to the basics when I do this. I feel less stressed when trying to create. You can take the palette knife and spread the gesso on your project like you are buttering a piece of bread. Again, you can add the gesso thick or as thin as you want. It's your creative process, so you do what you feel. After the gesso is spread out, you can take your palette knife and pounce it on the gesso. This makes the coolest texture. The cool thing about this is if you don't like it, spread it back out and start over. I am going to be using the end of the palette knife and scribbling into the gesso. You can even use the end of your paintbrush to do this technique. As I was sitting here experimenting, I thought it would be fun just to spread out some gesso pretty thick and then look around on my desk to see what I can find to create some texture. So I have some corrugated cardboard and you could see that this creates such cool texture and lines in the, in the gesso. And then I'm going to take a bottle cap uh, that was actually on a Gatorade bottle that was on my desk and just put it in the gesso. So, so simple. I had so much fun just grabbing things here and there on, off of my desk and creating texture. Here is one of those stipple brushes from Finnebear. It's hard to see, um, but I was just kind of pouncing it on to create some cool texture. I had some string on my desk, so I thought it would be cool to put it into the gesso. It's hard to tell on a camera, but the texture is there. The next technique I'm going to be showing you how you can add things to the gesso to create your own texture paste. I'm going to be adding sand to my gesso. This might be one of my favorite techniques ever because I absolutely love all of the texture fantasy paste that Finiber has, but I can't get all of them. So I like to create my own with some gesso and you can add any color that you want and some sand. And you could see here how gritty it turns out. It's so amazing. Think of all the different colored paste you can create with products you might already have. I love how gritty the sand makes the gesso. You could see as I'm spreading it out here. This grit paste adds so much texture and dimension to any mixed media project. 
All right, we are going to move on to adding some little micro beads. These micro beads come in all different colors, but it really doesn't matter, obviously, because you are mixing it in with the gesso, and in this case, some sand. This is going to give even more texture to that paste that we already created with the sand and the gesso. Here's a closer look at that amazing texture. I had some extra paste left over, so I'm just scraping it on this piece of paper, and I'm going to start playing around with different ways to add even more texture within the texture paste. So I'm taking that bottle cap and just putting it into the paste and I'm taking the end of my paintbrush and just scribbling, so simple. This technique I threw in here for fun so I can show off my friend Nuneka's stencil. She designed this stencil and has so many more. You can use gesso the same way as you would use modeling paste. Just use a palette knife and spread it over top of the stencil. Isn't this stencil design amazing? I am moving on to stamping. I am going to be using my friend Karen Tamir's stamps for this technique. All you do is take the foam stamp and stamp it directly into the gesso. And don't forget to stamp off. You could see the amazing texture just a stamp and some gesso creates. Speaking of my friend Karen, she has come up with some amazing creative exercises. This is a clip and you could see her video over on her channel. I will have it linked in the description box below. All right, let's get back to some stamping. If you know me, you guys know that I absolutely love stamping. I really love these foam stamps that my friend Karen has designed uh, through Joggles. They will be linked down below so you guys can check them out. But they only need a little bit of uh, paint and they stamp perfectly. I am moving on to using the brayer on top of a Carabelle Studio stamp. These stamps are amazing and they're actually designed for gel printing, so they're perfect to use with any types of paints. I just brayered on the gesso and then I stamped it onto this card base that had some of that gray gesso on it. I do have a few more ideas where I will show you even more ways to stretch your stash so you don't have to feel the need to buy all of the products out there on the market. So click the playlist right here and if you haven't already, be sure to check out Karen's video. It will be linked down in the description box as well. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.